Kansas, Arkansas, Kentucky, diamond spitting volcanoes. And is this what's causing these earthquakes and jolts in the central United States? In the video before this one, we saw the volcanic ash deposits over Kentucky. And we saw that we have northwest volcanoes in Kentucky. We also saw that we had three in the northeast, plus another nine. And this is a garnet, as you can see, on the 7 o'clock position underneath the uh, diamond here. And uh, these, these are the types of gems that we're getting from these volcanoes. They're not lava spitting volcanoes. They're diamond spitting volcanoes and other precious stones like garnets and things. The, this is a world map. And you can see Canada and the United States, for example. And you have a lot of them on the East Coast. Kimberlite volcanoes, you can see right there, a lot around the Great Lakes, around the um, area of the New Madrid seismic zone, and plus the central United States where we have these uh, Kansas, Arkansas, um, Oklahoma area, and uh, of course around uh, Yellowstone, and uh, all right, the northern territories of Canada. But uh, this is where we have recently talked about the mid-continental rift basically you have the state splitting in three you have on the east you have the new madrid seismic zone which is a rift valley then you have the mid-continental rift and both these areas of course have magma underneath and um, we have this horse-shaped shoe of mantle the mantle plume that has magma underneath, and as we said before, the geologists don't know where this magma is coming from, but it's been there for the past billion years or so. And this is splitting the central United States from, for example, the Great Lakes from uh, Wyoming. So you're having the states splitting into three. The smaller portion on the east from the New Madrid seismic zone, and that has volcanoes there, as we said. You have the mantle plume of the Great Lakes splitting the mid-continental rift there. And then you have, of course, the larger portion, which is from the central towards the west coast. But these are, as we said, they're not lava. They're diamond spitting. So if we're wondering how diamonds migrate from the Earth's mantle to the surface, it's because rare and unique volcanoes are there, these kimberlite volcanoes. They're carrot-shaped channels. They have a, they, they're wide on top and narrow towards the bottom. And most often are found in continental cratons, as we have this craton here in the United States, uh, which are some of the oldest rock formations on Earth. They reach deep into the center of the Earth, where the pressure is very uh, high, high enough to form diamonds. So their eruptions spit out rocks, minerals, and... Uh, uh, diamonds and uh, gar and uh, garnets, and um, they're coming in from directly from the mantle. That's why for that could be why we're having a lot of these boom sounds around Kansas, and the houses are shaking. And a lot of people don't know what how to explain this. Um, they say maybe it was a supersonic jet that flied flew overhead, and they find out that there was no supersonic jets or military jets. You know drills or anything like that and they were still wondering why are all these strange boom sounds and the house is shaking well it could be the earth it could be the uh, pressure underneath because of these uh, for example in Kansas all these volcanoes that you have there they're diamond spitting volcanoes and uh, they're going to spit out these diamonds uh, you know, the pressure has to be released from, from really deep down inside. It's not lava. It's, it's minerals. So um, they spew out. These rocks and minerals are spewed out are, that are diamonds and garnets and semi-precious stones. So these kimberlite eruptions are not very common. They're never directly observed. But scientists think they happen when parts of the Earth's mantle melts into low-density magma and is capable of rising up through the bottom end of the kimberlite. There's a series of chemical reactions that propels this thing towards the surface of the Earth. 
Now, we know that most of them are found in, as we said, from the map, Canada, Brazil, Siberia, um, South Africa, China, North China, Australia, and of course we have all those that exist in the United States, Kansas, Arkansas, Kentucky. Um, so take your pick. Uh, I just wanted to make this video because we have to keep this in mind when we have all these um, uh, earthquakes in the Midwest, in the central United States. It's not just fracking. They're, they're too big to be fracking. This is 3.5, 3.0 for goodness sakes. Um, that's not fracking. Um, but we go into the tectonic summary of natural occurring earthquake activity here, according to USGS. Most of North America, east of the Rocky Mountains, has infrequent earthquakes. Of course, they make no mention here at all of the Kimberlite volcanoes. USGS does not mention Mid-Atlantic Rift here, and they don't mention Kimberlite any type of volcanoes here, um, unfortunately. Maybe we should write, why do I keep saying this? You know, at the end of every um, Yellowstone update every month, Michael Poland uh, says, if you have any questions, email us, and we're going to get back to you right away. I should, I should uh, ask him about this. Of course, he's in Yellowstone, but uh, still he could direct me to somebody. Uh, why don't they mention uh, the mantle plume of the Mid-Continental Mid Rift that goes all the way down to Texas? And because there's magma under there. And why don't they mention the Kimberlite diamond spinning volcanoes of this area? Maybe they, <laughs> maybe they think that people will take up the hobby of mineralogy and go and take their little day trips every weekend and start digging with their little ge geology hammers and, and, and picks and start. You know, I took one geology course in Queens College. I, I loved that. We even went, went to a, um, a zinc mine in, Phil in uh, Pennsylvania. And we went all the way to, we had hard hats and we went all the way down. My goodness. They had to bring us back up before they blasted. Um, uh, anyway, we went to this park. I can't remember. Was it upstate New York or was it New Jersey? I can't remember. Anyway, um, they did give us, you know, from our course, we, each, we didn't buy it. We were given, they were kind enough to give us our own sets of geological uh, picks and little shovels and stuff. And um, we went to this uh, uh, national park uh, to see huge boulders that had minerals in them garnet schists garnet we were about 30 people in our class on this field trip and uh we were told of course uh, we were warned not to take anything from the park we were not allowed to remove anything from the park um and there were these two guys at the end of the line they decided to use their instruments to remove the garnet from this huge boulder i mean you know <laughs> and they told us Keep a lookout for us and t let us know down the line if anybody's coming for us, you know. <laughs> and they started picking away, you know. And they came back on the bus with huge smiles on their faces. <laughs> we didn't ask anything. We figured, you know, they had the tools to do it. But I'm not, I'm not saying I agree with that, okay. But, you know, to each his own. But um, that was, of course, New York. And we saw from the map that we have a lot of areas there with kimberlites uh, and garnet. Uh, so we also have this because of the earthquakes here in Kansas, Arkansas, and in this area. So earthquakes east of the Rocky Mountains, although less frequent, are typically felt over a much broader region than earthquakes of similar magnitude in the west. And uh, they can be felt more than 10 times larger than a similar magnitude earthquake on the west coast, as we could say here. It would not be unusual for magnitude 4 in the East Coast to be felt by a significant percentage of population in many communities more than 60 miles from its source, and uh, so on and so forth. So it's not all man-made. I believe that, um, hopefully I should remind myself to send a little, a little email to uh, somebody, uh, maybe Mike Poland, and um, of Yellowstone, and ask him, um, concerning the Kimberlite volcanoes and the 
mantle plume of the mid-continental ridge rift, sorry, rift in the, um, this area of the central United States. As you can see, that horseshoe is shaped up there. Um, that crack there, that blue crack going from Vancouver all the way down to towards um, Georgia, to you know, crossing this black line of mi uh, new Madrid seismic zone, which is, should be the, called the New Madrid Rift Valley. That's where it stops. That's about 2,200 miles. That's a crack. And uh, then you have the black line, which is the New Madrid seismic zone, the Rift Valley there. And, of course, towards the east there, at the Allegheny Mountains, the Appalachian Mountains, all those there are kimberlites as well. So we have a lot of um, kimberlite uh, volcanoes as we see from the map, and um, all along the east coast as well. And uh, all these beautiful mountains with lakes that we have upstate New York and in New Jersey and all these areas, beautiful areas, those are all volcanoes. They're ancient volcanoes, but they're volcanoes. So I'll leave links below for you for this. I just wanted you to know what's happening there in um, the Midwest, in central United States. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.